Welcome. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm Scott Patton, your co-host, along with Martin Patella, Life Coach. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Hi. I'm doing good. Thank you. All right. So uh, we have almost 15,000 people in a Facebook closed group called Fibromyalgia Support. And it has really taken on a life of its own. The people there are very active. They're very concerned. Uh, they share their stories. And in many cases, it breaks our hearts. And recently, because it takes time to build trust, recently what we're finding is the tide is turning. We're starting to get a different type of comment from people. And that comment runs along the lines of, thank you, Martin. I'm so appreciative of, of all the things that you've done here. I tried, in this particular case, hemp oil with CBD, and my pain has gone down significantly. I just cannot believe it. And we're seeing more and more of those stories, which means that we're finally getting people to look at the functional medicine side of life as opposed to the drug side of life. And I wanted to kind of bring in a little bit of my own story. It's not a fibromyalgia story, but it does delve into a couple of the uh, products that we really want to talk about today that could make a huge difference in your pain level. Those are Fibro Ease and Fibrenza. And so my story is a couple of years ago, my liver stopped. Nobody knows why. There was no cancer. There was, I'm not a drug de uh, addict or dealer, uh, you know, not an alcoholic, drink one beer a month or something like this. I don't smoke. I don't smoke pot. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't smoke anything. I go do hot yoga. I walk three miles a day. All these things that are supposed to be fine, and my liver stopped. And the result of the liver stopping was the pancreas got upset, got inflamed, and I was in the hospital for two months, unable to eat or drink anything for most of those times. So I had these little tubes going into my body, and uh, you know, in emergency situations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, the medical doctors, because it's probably likely that I'm very likely that I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all the work that they did. So the result of this, of course, was that the fluids got into my legs, my legs were swollen, and as I walked and walked and walked, the legs stopped being swollen, except that the knees remained swollen and the knees were sore. And I had this persistent ache not a sharp pain at all, but ache throughout my body. And I recognized all of the comments that the people in the fibromyalgia group were making. And I thought, there but for the grace of God go I, or there is my future, I should do something. So Martin and I spoke, and he said, well, you should take some of this fiber ease, and you should take some of the fibrenza, and some superfoods, and do this and this and this, and exercise and everything else. And now two years later, I'm actually doing some squats with my knees that I could not do. They, the knees were too painful to uh, even three or four months ago. So I've had this sort of gentle movement up in my health. And now I'm starting to see some significant changes in the one part that was sort of left to heal, which were my knees. And they were, they're still slightly swollen, but not so bad. And I'm able to do, I'm just so excited because I go to hot yoga and I do this squat or this certain pose that I could not do a year ago, and I could not do three months ago without a great deal of, of pain and concern, because it's, it's concerning when you're in a position, I don't know if I can actually get out of it. And so what I wanted to do today was talk with Martin and you about FibroEase and Fibrenza and how you can use that. So Martin, maybe you can give us a little overview of the two products, and then we'll get into a little bit more detail on them. Right. So... Let's overview the fibromyalgia itself. It's, just, it's, it's a word that people use in general as a label. You know, it's, it's just getting to be called fibro because people call it that. But it's, it really is this. Uh, chronic inflammatory histamine-mediated illness. To unpack it, chronic means it's there all the time. Inflammatory means that the inflammation is the main symptom. There are four symptoms to inflammation. Heat, redness, swelling, and pain. 
course, you seldom feel the heat because it's usually on the inside. But if you if you say you sprain your ankle or or hit yourself with a hammer or something like that on your thumb, you will experience all of it visibly. It will be red, swollen, painful. So sometimes the swelling is represented as, as itching because the, the tissue is stretching and you're itching. Anyway, so what we now know as fibro has also 200 other classified names, such as uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, where the immune system is attacking the thyroid gland, or Sjogren's, where it's attacking the salivary gland and, and the tear ducts, or the uh, rheumatoid arthritis, when it's attacking the joints, uh, or arthritis, when it's attacking the other aspects of your joints, or diabetes, when it's attacking your uh, pancreas, or cardiovascular disease when it's in the arteries, and so on. I mean, I could go on for a long time naming each one of these inflammatory conditions, and they have common set of causes. Number one, nutritional stress. We are eating foods that should not be eaten. Industrial foods are not health foods. We are eating... Uh, wrong foods. We are mismatching our genetics with the food intake. Like, for instance, not everybody should be eating like an Italian farmer, meaning pizza and pasta. Um, Italian farmers should be. Right. And th the reason this happens is this. If you're born as a child in northern Italy, in the valley of the river Po, you are going to be living in the granary of the world that they have invented the uh, growing of, of wheat and living a lifestyle on it. You will have had many, many generations starting maybe at 1000 BC and every 20 years, another generation being born into that. And with each succeeding generation, the more adapted people that are well suited to that food resource thrive, and the, are, the ones that are not adapted do not thrive. And so they get, um, um, for some reason, my uh, power just went off here on my computer. Um, we still got you. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, so thrive, not thrive. <laughs> When you don't thrive, you probably don't make reproductive age and you're taking yourself and your offspring out of circulation. So in just very few generations, everybody that's living on that food resource is well adapted to it. We don't have that anymore. We have had this food revolution, the industrial revolution. All of us are thrown into the same soup and we're eating foods that may or may not be appropriate for us genetically or for anybody, period. I mean, we're eating stuff that should not be consumed as food. Anyway, so then that's the big picture. So the other inputs that will make things worse are industrial toxins, such as lead, mercury, cadmium, and so on. Uh, the dust from brake pads of automobiles and tires and whatever else. And viral load, especially things like Epstein-Barr virus. Um, Coxsackie and uh, cytomegalovirus and herpes virus. Those are the popular ones, but especially the epstein barr virus. So if you have had a mononucleosis in your teens, and if you have had mercury fillings in your face, and if you have had the genetics of a parent who has had these sort of problems, and if you are now eating the diet that's the North American standard, you have a very high chance to be like what happened to me. I totally caved in when I was about 28, 29 years old. Just total, total destruction. Took me maybe five or six years of working with the first medical professionals, like orthopedic surgeons and whatnot. And then 
then with uh, the alternative, the chiropractic, naturopathic, and then the really off the wall stuff. Like I've tried dozens and dozens of different therapies because I was well off. I was earning well and I was plowing a lot of money into this because I didn't want to live in pain. And eventually it came to the point where it was none of this will work. I really have to fix me. So what you're saying is garbage in, garbage out. Pretty much. If you're going to continue doing what you've done so far up to this point, you are going to continue to be getting the results that you have gotten. So when you eat food that we're not supposed to be eating, drink water that's polluted and, and not uh, not clean, you're breathing air that's full of all these toxic stuff that's going on, you've got the electromagnetic uh, cell phone waves going through the, everything, and then you're maybe in a house where who knows what type of paint was used or what's in the carpet, and, you, and then you've got clothes and you're washing them with stuff that's uh, not toxic and it gets absorbed through the skin. I, it's just like one, it's just one total bad, uh, it's like the aquarium where you never clean it and the poor little fishies are going, oh my goodness, can't live in this anymore. Right. Yeah, it's sort of like sticking thousand little pins into the tomato or something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and then wondering why it all falls apart. It's micro injuries, each one of them. But in totality, they are... There is a last straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah, I like and then you have, yeah, then you have the full blown fibromyalgia. It's called the flare, right? Mm -hmm. So the language we use is triggers and thresholds. Your threshold would be the capacity to withstand the onslaught of negative influences, and the triggers are the negative influences. And it could be the oncoming storm, the air pressure changes, and you feel it two or three days ahead. Uh, in your bones or whatever. Yeah, that's one of the comments in our group. Is does anybody else when the weather changes have a flare? Yes. Yes. Everybody. Yes. Everybody you can feel it. And it's a matter of degree, right? Like mm -hmm. I remember when growing up in I grew up in Winnipeg, Central Canada, around late September, October, I could feel the frozen Arctic air just over the northern horizon ready to come down and freeze us for six months. And that's the, the weather is changing, right? And, of course, I didn't have a flare. I didn't have, a, you know, a, a pain or anything else, but I could feel that. So but what if feeling that was intense pain instead of just this sensation, oh, the weather is changing? Yeah, it's, it's dialed up. It's just yeah, dialed it's up. Yeah. And so, of course, one of the most common uh, statements we hear from people is they don't believe me. I look fine. Yes. Right? Yes. Like a person with an internal inflammation looks perfectly fine, beautiful, healthy, healthy looking. Yeah. It's not like yeah. you've got a broken arm with a big cast on it, right? Right. Or, or a slash down your face or whatever. No, you look fine. But on the inside, it feels terrible. And there are, of course, two sides, right? There's the nerve endings, which are at the perception sites, and then there's the brain. And so is the pain caused by problem in the nerve endings, or is the problem, is the pain caused by how the brain perceives the signal or interprets the signal? Good point. I hadn't thought of that, really. And so they, the doctors we have developed something like Lyrica, which messes with your brain. It's never mind, never mind that noise from the nerves. Just turn it off. Don't listen to it. That's Lyrica. But what it does besides that is mess around with all kinds of other things. And so the, the side effects can be horrendous. Weight gain and, and uh, I don't remember all of this. I have a long list of it somewhere. But and the common ones are weight gain and, uh, and mental states that are just crazy hisses and you're and not pops. getting better that's the point yeah. right like it's yeah, masking it over yeah it's kind of like when you're driving your car and you see the the light come on saying that you've got an engine problem you take the gum out you stick it over the light can't see the light we're good well you know for a couple more miles and then your engine seizes up and now you can't do anything right 
And so I keep advocating with people that the chemical route is really it doesn't have a happy ending because when when you put on a uh, for instance an NSAID which is a um, anti-inflammatory non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug so you can take those ibuprofen is a great example of it but it has a side effect that wrecks your liver so you can load ibuprofen for a while but there comes a time when you're at your limit, right? So choose choose the path, right? If you're choosing the path of the chemicals, the only way this is going to end up is in a downward spiral toward uglier problems. So it sounds like one of the things that you have to do kind of in the beginning, and, and we're going to get to fiber ease and fiberenza soon, uh, is stop digging the hole. Like you've got to take a look at like what am if I'm drinking Coca Cola and sugary pop drinks and and I'm eating Big Macs and uh, you know pizzas from the local pizzeria that's you need to sort of stop and say like what am I putting into my mouth what's my environment like what do I need to do to kind of clean that up so now I'm eating organic fruits and vegetables and I'm eating free range chickens and eggs and that sort of thing or you know, whatever it is, I'm, and then your whole environment, like maybe there are toxic people that are causing emotional stress because you had mentioned cortisol, I think, um, yeah. you know, so you've got to sort of look at all these parts of your life and it's very difficult when you're in pain and it's very difficult when you, maybe you can't work or you've been off work for a long period of time or you feel stuck in where you're at, but you're going to have to take some sort of radical action. If you, this is why we did, by the way, the seven day challenge. I want to put a plug in for that. It's free. And for seven days, each day, we've got a video that says, do this, try not to, yeah, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, try this, try this. And we know that one day isn't enough. Like what we hope is, is that you'll not, for example, drink, drink milk for a day. And then you'll go, oh, I, f I felt a little bit, and you're journaling, I felt a little bit better. Okay, remember that. And when you've done the seven-day challenge, try three days, try five days. Maybe you're lactose intolerant and that's causing, you know, 50% or 40% of your problem or all of your problem. And then when you stop doing it, your, your body is able to heal itself and feel better. Nobody knows your body but you. So you've got to be the one that says, okay, I'm aware now that if I drink coffee or I, or I eat this grain in gluten or whatever it happens to be in those seven days, it has a negative effect. Martin and I are kind of lucky in that, and the problem, by the way, is, is that it's three days. Like if you eat something on Monday, you won't really find out till Thursday. So we, we kind of trick you with the one day thing because we just want you to be aware, oh, I got through a day without drinking milk and I didn't feel, I felt a little bit better. Maybe I think I did, I'm not sure. Go three days and see what happens because it's really three days. But for Martin and I, when we eat something we shouldn't, for me, I get zits up here like crazy and my nose explodes. You know, and I, to be quite honest and truthful, and Martin's sort of the same way, except probably in different parts of his face, we would rather that happen than have a flare up and be in agony like the members of, of the fiber support group are. You know, I mean, really, it breaks our heart. But we look at that and I go, okay, like, what did I eat three days ago? Because, you know, I got all these zits up here and all of a sudden. And then I don't eat whatever that was and they go away. And, and sometimes it's really fast. Like we were talking a week or two ago and Martin's going, oh, Scott, like you ate something up there, didn't you? And I go, yeah. And then like the next day, or maybe it was my nose, I forget which part. And then like the next day or two days later, it's like, wow, that really cleared up fast. Yeah. The Excel... Excel superfoods help a lot, okay? And that's, that's my... Uh, so let that's me my just secret. say something here, which is I really feel for the people who don't have the means mm -hmm. to change much. I, I hear it, you know, like I may seem callous saying, well, get this product or get that product or buy organic or whatever. And... Uh, and I'm, I'm not deaf to the fact that uh, there are people who are living on $900 a month on some social security, which it's, that's just sheer insanity. I mean, our system, our society is set up so 
crazy that, uh, well, anyway, the only guy who would have probably done right by those people was Bernie Sanders and, uh, and his ilk, and he's certainly not going to be uh, um, running anything anytime soon. Right. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. Even small changes can have positive impact, even just the choices. I understand that the cheap food is the worst of it. Yes, the cheap food is the carbs, the um, the canned, the whatever. Fruit loops. Government subsidized, government subsidized three grains, corn, wheat, and soy. The sad thing about it is those are the worst. So you need to figure out, well, for instance, uh, one of the most important foods is bone broth. You can make chicken soup out of really cheap things. Chicken feet, chicken heads, and chicken backs. Next. The stuff that normally gets practically given away, thrown away even. Buy that and some carrots and onions and make chicken stock. It's going to make a huge difference in your health. Yeah. So there are solutions. You just have to dig for them. Yeah. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, fibro ease. Right, so uh, we have this uh, wonderful herbalist, Elijah Free, who has been practicing for 30 plus years. He's a Vietnam vet. And uh, he has developed a line of products, one of them, this fibro ease. And this is well tested. This has been in use for 20 plus years. Fibro ease is not a solution for fibromyalgia. It's a solution for fibrosis, which is a specific condition. When the fibrous tissue rises in the muscles, they feel like corduroy. It feels like you have ropes under the skin. And uh, we actually have a video on this page uh, that, sh that actually teaches you how to have a friend palpate the muscles. Like you can touch the... Uh, the trapezius muscle in just such a way to, that it will become really clear that you do or do not have that sort of tissue in there. And if you do, fibro ease is going to be very helpful. It will clear the uh, metabolic condition that causes this to happen, and it will just soften your hardening muscles. It does a great job. So if you're one of the people for whom this is appropriate and applicable, then use it. So how? So it comes in a small bottle with a dropper. How would you take it, Martin? Um, half a dropper full, two or three times a day, every day. It takes probably about ten days to uh, kick in. Although there's, as you can see, somebody notices the uh, difference right away, first day. And. Uh, right. Anyway, so you use that, and it dissolves. Well, it stops the metabolic condition that causes this hardening of the tissue, and there you are, feeling a lot better. So if you're one of those people, then this is going to make a huge positive impact in your life. Right, right. Yeah, yeah so, so in, in my, my case, case, I was I starting, starting to feel this pain all over. over. Just a second. I'm getting an echo. So in my case, I was starting to feel pain all over, and so I started taking it, and I took it for about, well, I took it twice for two months. I got two bottles, and uh, I was, and I noticed, like, the pain was starting to go. So it was, and I also was paying attention to what I was eating. I was drinking lots of water. I was making sure that uh, it, all the, almost all the fruits and vegetables that I get are, are organic, and I was making sure that I was cutting out, I cut out the wheat, which was a big thing. And I haven't had dairy for a while. So, well, yogurt is the only dairy that I have. So, I, and I just started to notice like, wow, like the pain level in my joints, in my body all over is uh, settling down. And it was, it was really amazing. Yes. So fiber is, it has its place. It works for some people. Now, if you have a general fibrosis. We have an enzyme, fibrinolytic, means that it dissolves fiber or 
fibrin, I should say. And fibrin is the tissue that your body uses to harden other body parts. So fibrinolytic dissolves fiber. And that's in fibrenza? Uh, that's in fibrenza. That enzyme is called uh, serapeptase. There are other enzymes. Um, so that, one of the things that happens when you've got, maybe when you've got fibromyalgia, I'm not sure, is we've got these small scar tissues in our muscles. Right. And, that's it. That's and the fibrosis. That's the fibrosis. And those scar tissues makes the muscles not work very well, keeps them in, in an inflammatory state. And what's cool about enzymes is part of what they do is they do deep healing. So they'll actually go in. I always thought scar tissues were like forever. And, um, right. you know, because you get a scar, you know, I, I cut myself on my hand or something like that. The scar is always there. And what I've noticed since I started taking more and more enzymes is the scar on my thumb is slowly fading. It's actually quite amazing. Yes. Yeah, I've had <laughs> – I remember one lady, uh, she called me after she used uh, a different fibrinolytic enzyme, but it's called Zymetol, but same serapeptase. Anyway, she used it for a fib fibros tumor. What the heck is the word? Uh, yeah, fibrin tumor. I, f I can't think of what the word is now. But anyway, it was a uterine fibroid. She used it for that, dissolved it. It all went away. And she says, and as a bonus, all of my stretch marks have gone. <laughs> because they are also made of the same scar thing. So all of a sudden you start getting a different picture of your body when you think, okay, I've got all this pain and it's inflamed, it's inflamed, sure, it's hot and everything else. But now when my body tries to fix the inflammation, it's creating scar tissue, which causes its own problem. So part of this healing process is to get rid of those scar tissues. And people that are using the fibrenza are seeing some amazing results. Absolutely. And then... You want to, uh, well, Fibrenza has other enzymes in it as well. They improve the circulatory system and other aspects of just the overall functioning. 14 yeah, powerful help. systemic enzymes put together. I, I was going to say, yeah, they, uh, they cleanse the blood and they uh, detoxify the cells. All right. And then we can further improve on it with Absorb which is formulated to uh, improve what you can get out of food, out of nutrition. So it's, it's a probiotic and digestive enzyme. So whatever they couldn't get inside of the fibrenza, they put into the absorb. And we did an interview with the manufacturer. You can see it down at the bottom here. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that struck me that he said was um, the absorb helps you to absorb more of the fibrenza. Right. And not only that, but also to get uh, every possible nutrient out of the nutrition you take. So whatever food you take, you're going to get more out of that. And it has, it has the type of nutrients that you would want to be taking in a multivitamin anyway. So uh, anyway, it's a great combination. And there's the fibrenza. Yeah, when when you have time, listen to Mike Kermarczyk. Uh, he's the uh, rep at the uh, manufacturing company. And uh, he, he says things quite well. He does. He explained it really, really well to us. So the point being is that there are some things you can try. They're not incredibly expensive. And... They're not going to give you a bad side effect. Like they're, they're just enzymes that you don't get. And so one thing we haven't said is what's an enzyme and why can't I get it out of my food? Well, anything that's cooked kills the enzymes. Almost, if not all of the chemical reactions in your body that occur are, they need an enzyme to work.
your enzyme level pretty much drops off a cliff when you're in your late 20s, late 30s. It's like, yeah, you, you've got all this energy. You see these kids running around. That's enzymes, okay? And then you see 60-year-olds like me and we're not running around. It's because we've depleted all of our enzymes and we've been eating pizza for 35 years and we haven't put any enzymes back in. So it's kind of like you start off with a bank account with a million dollars and by the time you're 30, you spend all but $14 of it. Now you got to live the rest of your life on 14 bucks. Good luck. You got to put the enzymes back. They're in an apple. They're in an orange. They're in celery. They're in carrots. But if you take the celery and the, if you take the apples and you make apple pie, they're gone. Right? You take orange juice and you pasteurize it, they're gone. You go and buy fresh carrot juice and you look and it's flash pasteurized it's gone. So you need to like eat food that's not cooked. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Hopefully you've got something out of this. Uh, we're here to restore vitality to you and to the planet. If you want to talk to Martin specifically about your own situation, you can get a hold of him at uh, life-enthusiast.com or you can call him direct at 866 Five four three 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 eight eight. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.